Hello everyone, I'm John Stegall. Today my lecture is on Sybil Luddington. So, listen my children and you shall hear of a lovely feminine Paul Revere who rode an equally famous ride through a different part of the countryside where Sybil Luddington's name recalls a ride as daring as that of Paul's. Now that's a poem about Sybil Luddington written on 14 April 1940 right after Hitler had invaded Norway during World War II, one month before Hitler's Wehrmacht invaded Holland, Belgium, and France, where America was still divided between isolationism because of the horrors of the First World War and the impending evils of Hitler's Mussolini's fascism in Europe and Hirohito and Tojo's warmongering in the Pacific. That was written by a young man in the county in which Sybil Ludington was born and raised. Now, Sybil Ludington, as the tale depicts, was a brave, valorous heroine of the American Revolutionary period. She donned a blue cape and made a night ride of 40 miles on 26 April, 1770 mile, excuse me, 1777, compared to Paul Revere's mere 12 miles as a full grown man, to warn her father, Colonel Henry J. Ludington, of the New York militia, the Continental Militia, of an impending British raid on Danbury, Connecticut. Now, early and mid 18th century historians create a hagiographic depiction of this young lady, displaying American exceptionalism and, embody and embodying the ethos and the mythos surrounding the revolutionary period and the virtue of the people who participated in the revolution. Mid 20th century historians use consensus historiography to reinforce that ideal of American exceptionalism. So what made Sybil Ludington a symbol, an icon, like I mentioned, a valorous heroine of the American Revolution? Well, geography and geopolitical considerations played a pomp, prominent, prominent role in the account of Sybil Ludington. John Shy discussed uh, in his 1976 work, people numerous and armed, reflections on the military struggle for American independence, that the area in which Ludington grew up and lived, the lower Hudson River Valley, was an extremely dense area, loyalist sympathizers, and overall apathetic to the cause of the revolution. Through the young Miss Ludington, the area's populace could claim a revolutionary heroine to placate any feelings of shame and guilt for not vociferously backing the revolution. Colonel, Luddy, Colonel Henry Ludington's biographer, William Fletcher Johnson, in his 1907 work, Colonel Henry J. Ludington, a memoir, reflects the hagiographic depiction of Sybil, her bravely donning that cape, riding through the night. Now, what's interesting is, objectively in history, keeping with Acts 1726 and the biblical world view that we take as historians at Liberty University, uh, to maintain, I'm sorry, that's Proverbs 1219, not Acts 1726. Allow me to back up and retort on that is that there's a lack of objectivity in history covering Sybil Ludington. And while it was a very brave thing for a 16-year-old girl to undertake at the time, it really had no military significance and it really had no impact on the course of the war or even in that campaign in that area of operations. Uh, the fact she made the 40-mile ride, while indeed brave and arduous and a feat of endurance for anyone, much less a 16-year-old girl, there was no way in a military feasibility that her father was going to be able to force march 40 miles through the night and arrive in any type of fighting shape to prevent, deter, and or completely stop the British raid at Danbury, Connecticut. Not a, lot, a whole lot of history covering that. Very little whatsoever at all is ever mentioned to that fact. But she does serve as a true, like I said, heroic heroine figure um, of the American Revolutionary War. Thank you.